broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus. You're watching Mustang News. Welcome to the Blue-Green Rivalry Edition of Poly Playbook, where we are going to preview arguably the best rivalry in college soccer. The sole senior on the men's soccer team, midfielder Steve Palacios, is going to join the show later. But first, let's recap Wednesday night's match. On Wednesday night at Alex G. Spano Stadium, the Cal Poly men's soccer team fell to Sacramento State by a score of 2-1. to one. Sophomore forward John Kernopoulos notched his second goal of the season in the 54th minute off of a corner by Chase Minter. But the Hornets tied the game in the 78th minute and then went ahead in the 84th minute and the Mustangs could not come back. Junior goalkeeper Wade Hamilton chalked up five saves on the night and moved his conference leading total to 88 saves. There's a lot of uh, interchange in the back line, um, switching players in and out. So I think maybe it, our rhythm broke a little bit because of you know the, the back line switching. But. Cal Poly remains three points behind Santa Barbara and Davis, and they will need some help along with some victories in the next week in order to take the Big West Conference crown. With the idea in mind that the Mustangs will need help to win the Big West Conference, they will first need a win this Sunday against UC Santa Barbara at Alex G. Spano Stadium. At 5 p.m., the Mustangs will take on the Gauchos in Spanos Stadium, where they have only lost once since the stadium was built. Last season's match at Spanos Stadium resulted in a 1-1 tie in double overtime, and last Saturday at Harder Stadium in Santa Barbara, the men's soccer team tied 2-2 in double overtime. Now the men's soccer team is currently at 3-3-2 in Big West play, with a chance to break into postseason play. The one thing I can say about our guys is they love the crowd. And I think, you know, you, you, you look at a game like Santa Barbara away last Saturday night, whether you're away or not, the guys are up for that type of a game because of the environment, because of the electricity, the atmosphere, and obviously we're going to have a rocking house on Sunday afternoon. Again, the rivalry match is set to kick off at 5 p.m. at Alex G. Spano Stadium, and then the Mustangs will travel to UC Davis next Wednesday for a chance to break into postseason. Here's the interview portion of Poly Playbook where we are bringing on senior midfielder Steve Palacios onto the show. And thank you, Steve, for coming on to the show. Uh, I want to know, you're the only senior on the entire roster in the Cal Poly men's soccer team. So can you talk to me about your journey from freshman year back to when you decided to come to Cal Poly and then up to uh, where you are now? Yeah, um, I remember it like it was yesterday. It flew by so fast, but looking at as a senior in high school, looking at the team that was playing, having one of my teammates actually on the team, and just getting ready and excited to come play for Cal Poly. And now I'm already here, my last game to go. You know, it, was, it was a fun journey and great experience. What drew you to come to this school in the first place? I know that now the program brings a lot of recruits to the Santa Barbara game, and they've been doing that for years. Was it that or something else that grabbed you and said, I want to go here? No, unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to come to that game. But it was, it was the coaching staff bringing me on, the style of play, and the beautiful campus. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so I talked to Matt a couple years ago, or a couple, excuse me, weeks ago on the show, and I want to know what you also thought about uh, head interim coach Phil Ruskin and how you think he's managed the team so far this season. Uh, I think Phil's doing a great job with our team. He was put in a sticky situation, and he's doing the best to overcome the situations we've put ourselves into so okay and now to the team's performance there was a disappointing result Wednesday against Sacramento State and I know you didn't play because of yellow accumulation uh, but can you tell me because I saw you yelling loudly and supporting <laughs> on the sidelines uh, what what did you see in your team's performance on Wednesday um, when I first got there it was I had to miss the first half because I had to do my midterm but when I got there it was looking pretty good we were out possessing good plays getting stuck on defense um, of course, after the PK, you know, the momentum switched and you can, I can just feel my heart starting to beat, you know. So I saw the players trying hard, but unfortunately we don't have the depth as we needed to perform that game. So, Do you expect uh, depth to continue to be an issue or you think the health's going to shore itself up by the time postseason comes? Yeah, I think we're getting our players back, so we should be peaking at the right time. So hopefully we get one player at a time every new week and stuff. 
Uh, can you talk about it? You think that uh, the back line has performed being a pretty makeshift back line with, uh, you know, center with basically everyone playing out of position in that back line? Yeah, it, that's it's really tough, but I think our players have done really well in stepping in new new roles and knowing how to adjust. So I think as long as we keep it going, we'll do fine. Okay, and now moving to the matchup this Sunday against Santa Barbara, the blue-green rivalry. Uh, you haven't seen a loss in the three years that you have hosted here at uh, Spano Stadium versus Santa Barbara. You tied 2-2 uh, at Harder Stadium last weekend. Uh, can you tell me uh, what do you expect from the Gauchos coming into Spano Stadium? Um, they're a great team, so I expect them to come in hard, full on press, and be a good technical and tactical formation. But our field is different than their field, so it's going to bring some challenges for them as well for us. But I think we'll do just fine. Okay. And so according to GoPoly.com, uh, this series has drawn 13 of the top 36 uh, regular season crowd figures in NCAA history. All the matches occur in the last eight seasons. The last five rank as the five highest attended collegiate soccer games in the country and this Sunday the game sold out a record 54 hours in advance a full 24 hours ahead of last year uh, can you given all those specific statistics uh, can you just speak about atmosphere of the game and maybe uh, talk to me about the few days leading up to the game as an athlete on campus how big of a deal it is and then you know during the game itself what's what's it been like for you well first I gotta give props to the coaching staff and the marketing team that they have because they did a great job on marketing promoting our game second the fans amazing for even coming out and selling out the game that's really awesome to see but as for me yeah it's cool to walk down and you know some people say hi good luck this game it really encourages you and challenges you to perform at your highest level. Has it been difficult for you to focus this week at all going into this game? <laughs> of course, you know, you always struggle with school and fans and then your teacher is just talking about it during the whole class, but it's, it's very good. I like it. What's the atmosphere like on the pitch on match day? Oh my. So you can't hear anything. So 10 yards away from you, I got my next teammate. He's trying to tell me something I can't hear and that really uh, performs, uh, not performs, it uh, creates trouble but for both teams, so you can't really argue about that. So. But would you uh, how, you describe it as maybe once in a lifetime? Sort oh, of thing? for sure. Just being just being in the locker room before and hearing everyone here in the stands go cheer, and when you come out, oh, the butterflies okay. on the stomach. So, uh, with that being said, I gotta ask tonight's Halloween. Uh, what uh, what are you gonna be for Halloween? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to figure that out with my teammates. I'll probably go with something as my teammates, but. I'm going to stay focused and worry about the game first. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, thank you for coming on, Thanks and I appreciate me. it, and good luck this Sunday. Right. Again, the blue-green rivalry match is set to kick off at 5 p.m. in Alex G. Spano Stadium, and the Mustangs will then travel to UC Davis on Wednesday. Well, that's it for this edition of Poly Playbook. Thank you for tuning in, and make sure to tune in next week. Thank you for watching, Cal Poly.